Thank you for joining in with us tonight. And we're going to get into our service tonight, but we just want to thank all of you, wherever you're listening at. Uh, we're just so appreciative and want you to get your pen and paper. Mm -hmm. And we're going to continue. Hopefully we can uh, finish up the teaching tonight on be in the world but not of the world from a biblical standpoint. And we're going to respect those that are in different time zones. We're going to do our very best to uh, remind ourselves of that as well as being led of the Holy Ghost. So we're going to ask Sister Morgan to uh, take us before the Lord in prayer and ask God blessing upon you all and the service tonight. Amen. God bless each and every one of you to the glory of God. As you continue to keep the faith, continue to stay encouraged, continue to stay focused in the Lord, and God will be done in each and every one of our lives. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. Oh, God, you, we thank you for shedding your blood on the cross for our sin that we might live again. Oh, God, we ask you to continue to help us to keep our minds set up on you. Oh, God, continue to help our faith to stay strong in you. Oh, God, continue to bless each and every home that are listening in tonight. Oh, God, you know everybody's heart tonight. You know what they need, God. And continue to help the man of God to speak a word into our lives and give us hope. Oh, God, continue to increase our faith that we continue to believe and trust in you no matter what we see. No matter what our circumstances and our situation might be, God, continue to keep our mind and our heart focused on you. And God, continue to bless us, continue to love each one another, God, because the first commandment of your promise that we love one another. Help us to forgive one another. Help us to pray ye for one another in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we thank you for your many blessings. Continue to bless our children and our children's children. Continue to bless those, the children that go on to school, God. We ask you to go before them. We ask you to protect them, God, in the name of Jesus. Continue to bless us from all sickness and pray home and danger and all diseases, God. Cover our children from COVID, God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, we know you're able to do all these things. And these men are blessed. We ask in your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, missionary sister wife Morgan. God bless you. And again, we're so thankful for all of the fellowship of pastors and churches. I was reminding myself uh, earlier that uh, it is a relationship. It is a fellowship. And uh, for the last three and a half years, if it had been just coming to Prattville at a local church here at Father, Son, Holy Ghost Church was keeping us together in relationship and loving one another, we would have failed by now. But it's relationship. Our relationship have grown stronger with God and with one another. And I'm so grateful to be a part of uh, a pastors that are uh, about our Father's business. So we pray that God will keep you. We're further the teaching tonight on the subject and the topic and the word that God gave me to encourage his peoples. And we're in some difficult times. Uh, we're in some difficult uh, times in our life that We've never uh, challenged or uh, been a part of some times that we're in now uh, concerning the world and the thing that goes on in the world. But nothing catches God by surprise. And I want to encourage the listeners tonight as well as the body of Father, Son, Holy Ghost Church. Uh, the Bible say uh, from the scripture, First John, Chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. I know most of you have those if you've been listening with us the last couple of weeks tonight. But for those that may have just been joining us, we're so thankful. But we're teaching from the chapter, from the scripture of First John, chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. And we're not just making something up. We're teaching what has been taught to us through the scripture that we may teach to others that we may keep, put, remain in our faith in Jesus Christ because nothing catches him by surprise. Uh, 
First John chapter 2, verse 15, read, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, but the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that does the will of God abideth forever. And we really want to, as we near closeness, we really want to encourage the listeners and the body of Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and the Scripture is saying to those that encouraging us to love not the world, we're going to find out as we near the end, it is talking, encouraging the believers, those that have accepted Christ, those that have been born again, those that have repented for their sin, those who God has chosen out of the world, and the writer, the scripture, the word, and I would do my very best to encourage us that it, the scripture is encouraging us, don't feel dismayed when things are happening to you and things are going on that you have no control over. Don't go back to the world. Don't go back to the old man. Don't go back to the sin nature. And it encouraging us that if we Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, if any born-again believer still love or fall in love with the world concerning sin, the old man, the sin nature, glory be to God, we are falling to such as the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, just simply the sin nature. And if we're not careful, we'll be done these things and still saying we are a believer. We are professing holiness and professing that we are of God. But he's reminding us tonight, encouraging us, that if we are of God, then we won't love the things of the world. And so, thanks, we my heart just overwhelmed with joy concerning the word of God and concerning the people of God. That God makes no mistake. And if we're not careful, we get pulled back into the world by people's opinion. We have to take the word for truth over everybody else's truth. Glory be to God. And so we're simply saying to the saints that while we're in this world physically and dealing with the present things of this world, the scripture is encouraging us not to be a part of it, not to be a part of the world value, not to be a part of religious acts saying it's all right to do this and all right to do that. And, but it's not all right to do this or that if it's sin when the Bible tells us as believers not to do it. To be not of the world requires us to be filled with the Holy Ghost. My God. If I was on Facebook Live, I would ask somebody to jot down or, or, or text on Facebook Live, filled with the Holy Ghost. 
also, since I'm not on Facebook Live, why don't you jot down on your notes, feel with the Holy Ghost. We're going to need it. And we are to be free from worldly influences. All my sisters and brothers tonight, I encourage us from the bishop all the way down to the servant. If we are going to maintain and bring glory to God as a saint, as one who said we are filled with the Holy Ghost, we're going to have to more than ever allow the Holy Ghost to lead, teach, and guide us that we don't be influenced by worldly activities. Worldly activity that people would say, I don't see anything wrong with it. You know, that's a dangerous, that's a dangerous stage, if I will, to be a part of buying in the people that say, I don't see nothing wrong with what the Bible said is wrong. If the Bible said, don't do it, and someone said, I don't see nothing wrong with doing it, oh, my God. Check the direction in which you're headed. God love us, saints, as I teach tonight. And finish this if I can. God love us. We must be a good example for others because someone was a good example for us with a righteous life. And this is what I would label as spiritual influence. There's a worldly influence, and there's a spiritual influence. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Worldly influence, when you're persecuted or wrongfully done, mm -hmm. you can be encouraged that I ain't going to take that. Mm -hmm. Glory. I won't take that. I will not take that. And you'll strike back. Yeah. But spiritually influenced, hallelujah, glory be to From those before us that have took that and some more, and they refuse to give in to the nature of the flesh. We'd rather suffer persecution, glory, than to retaliate and displease God. When we as saints be off this world, it means we are following the unbelieving world values, their belief, their ways. And the Bible touches on that. It says every man's right in his own eyes. It touches again by saying there's a way that seems right under man, but the end thereof is death. Glory be to God. We have people yet got life, physical life, but yet dead. Glory be to God. It's a dangerous thing to be in a house of prayer, on a pastor, under the banner of a Christian, a believer, and dead. Glory be to God. Only God, only the Word, only the, the, the Holy Ghost, only Christ can give us life. So I encourage us tonight, choose life. The Bible says that God has set before us good and evil, life and death. Choose wisely. Oh, church, hear me tonight. Oh, saints, hear me tonight. In this world, the ruler of this world, Satan, the devil himself, is beginning to transform angels of light and making things look like it is of God. But, oh, saints, we need 
the Holy Ghost to instruct us when things look right that may not be right. <laughs> Hallelujah. People talking right that may not be right. We need the Holy Ghost. Every believer, every born-again believer, every professing saint need not stop short of being filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost yourself. Mm -hmm. As individuals, every one of us need the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory be to God. And then thereafter that, in this world, we can have power. Glory be to God. We can have power after the Holy Ghost to crucify that sin nature when it rises up and want us to go back to doing things under the banner of the world through sinful flesh. And we encourage us through John chapter 15. Verse 19 says, if we as saints were off the world, mm -hmm. the world would love its own. But because we as saints are not of this world, God has chosen the saints out of this world. That why the world, that's why the world hate us. I would encourage believers, saints born-again believers, do not try to get along with the world, ungodly peoples, unsaved peoples. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. You're to follow peace with all mankind. You're to love unsaved God, ungodly people. You're to save those that love those that are in sin, love those that persecute you. Love those that do you wrong, but you cannot afford to compromise. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God, your salvation, to get along with somebody so they can speak well of you. The world is not going to speak well of you. Mm -hmm. We almost, almost having problem among believers mm -hmm. if they are not spiritually mature when we're teaching and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So there's no way we're going to be able to compromise our salvation to get along with the world so they can speak well of us. Glory be to God. Just love them, treat them with a heart full of love, but do not compromise your salvation. Glory be to God. I'm thinking of a passion of scripture says that what will a man give in exchange if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? What would you have gained if you gain the whole world and all of the richness and lose your own soul? What would it profit you? So we encourage us tonight that when saints or sinners repent of their sin and put their faith in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and seek to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You notice that the Lord has prompted me and, and encouraged me to cease from mention of the Holy Ghost, if we're going to carry out our commission, if we're going to be of heavenly value in this sin-sick world that we're in, glory, we're going to need the Holy Ghost. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. If we're going to endure some hardships coming from the world, coming from those of the world that's in our family, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Don't be dismayed, mothers and fathers. If you got grown children and made a choice 
to live like the world and not how they were taught in the admonition of the Lord. And there are the word. Don't be surprised and dismayed if they disrespect you and talk back to you and, and do you wrong. Glory be. They're of the world. Glory be to God. So, Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and seek to be filled with the Holy Ghost and follow Jesus in obedience. Mm -hmm. Somebody need to jot down and underline obedience. Mm -hmm. This is the world way. Then and now is to be disobedient. You know, I was asked, and I shared not long ago, I was asked some years ago concerning sin. There's not but one sin that brought on all sin, and that's the sin of disobedience. Glory be to God. As long as Adam and Eve was operating in obedience to God, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Everything, the trees, the birds, the fish, uh, the earth, everything was at peace, producing in unity, in solidarity, doing what it was supposed to do. The trees would produce delicious fruit. The fish, the birds, the animals could get along. But when sin of disobedience, it brought forth ruin. Oh, God, hallelujah. But God is still able. I was touching on last week that we're living in a time where the world has copied the way of the saints of old. I can remember that religious people would criticize the sanctified people for shouting and dancing. They would criticize the saints of God for singing songs and criticize the saints of God for music in the house of prayer. It would criticize the saints for lifting up Jesus' name. And now they have copied the way of the world. They got the music. They got, I would even go and say they got the best musician. They know how to perform. Glory be to God. They got a zeal of God. Yeah. Glory be to God. And if we're not careful as leaders, pastors, preachers, if we're not careful, we would find ourselves to draw a crowd. We need to do it the world way because they right. But we don't need a zeal of God. We need the full holiness of God. And it's the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If any man... Be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Mm -hmm. All things yes. become new. Saints of God, if you're in Christ Jesus and been born again, you got to get to the place where you see things God way. Yes. If God said love ye one another, it should be a struggle. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. We got to get to the point where we see things God way. Yes. God said, "Be ye holy, for I am holy." It shouldn't be a struggle. If God said, "Forgive and repent quickly," it should not be a struggle. And He's not talking about forgiving those that are righteous. He's saying, "Forgive those that wrong you." Glory be to God. The righteous should not struggle with. Forgiving peoples that wrong them. Hallelujah. So, we are saved and called in this world 
to be agents of grace. Hallelujah. Just like God's grace was sufficient for me before I became born again, I was of the world. I did things that I didn't deserve the blessing that I have now, but it was his grace. Hallelujah. And we should be those same agents to those that are of the world. Yes, Lord. That grace would give them extended time like it did us, mm-hmm. like it did me. Glory be to God. When we're persecuted and talked about, we should be reminding ourselves that we are agents of grace. Mm-hmm. And we should have the quality of grace that are heavenly. Glory be to God. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. As saints, we are the light of the world. Glory be a city that set up on a hill cannot be hid. All the born again believers, the saints of God, my God, in this dark world that we're in, the saints ought to be blessed that we're qualified. Mm-hmm to represent Jesus as the light of the world. Mm -hmm. We ought to be blessed that we are a city that's set on a hill that cannot be hid. If our light is on things, if our light is burning and Mm trimmed, even in a dark world, people ought to see that there's something different about them saints. It's something different and more than just religion. It's something different. It should see the light of Christ in her, not our light, but the light of Christ. Mm. Glory be to God. I I remember several, several years ago when I took my first flight with my wife and some of the saints. We went on mission. And it was such a beautiful sight. I've driven into many cities, and I could see the city lights before I get there. But to be thousands of feet in the air in an airplane, coming into a city to land and see the whole city lit up, no darkness. Darkness was there, but the light of that city was lit up, and the darkness that was there could not comprehend it. Glory be to God. Saints, we're living in time where we ought to be the light of the world. While we're in this world, and in a dark hour, the world ought to see the light of the saints. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And all of the darkness of this world, all of the trouble of this world, all of the sickness of this world should not put our light out. My God. And even many of our cities have found out that light is so important to a city that they burn them all day and all night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Light gets attention. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Darkness brings fear. But light gets attention. When you walk by a marketplace, by a store, if you look through the window and see the light on, you just know they're open for business. Glory be to God. And that's the way it ought to be with the saints in this dark world. They ought to see the light of Christ in us and know that God is open for business. He's in the saving business. He's in the healing business. He's in the forgiving business. Glory, because they see the light Mm. of Christ. Hallelujah. And as we near close, in just 
a few minutes. Glory be to God. Though the world hate us, many kill and may be killed and may kill the body. Oh, but this is good news. They can't touch the soul. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. May kill the body. Glory be to God. May kill us with words, harsh words. May kill us with words from their tongue that lie on us. But it can't touch the soul. Because in Christ Jesus, we are free. Hallelujah. Vengeance is the Lord. You don't have to fight back because we're free. You don't have to retaliate because we're free. And the world call humility, humble people, they call us coward and weak. If we haven't reached a spiritual maturity, glory be to God, we will buy into what people call weak when you're humble. I challenge those that haven't overcome and haven't reached the level of maturity. Don't buy into the world way. The world say if men and women, saints alike, that are submissive to their pastor, they call it weakness. And you got to be strong in the faith. You got to be to overcome the world way. Because the world and worldly people will call you a coward because you submit to the authority of your leader. Submitting to your pastor is just like submitting to God and right and righteous. And we're living in a dark hour even in many church houses. Among many church peoples, we are struggling with darkness when it comes to obeying. We're struggling in darkness when it comes to submitting to authority. We're struggling in darkness when it comes to loving one another like Christ loved the church. We're struggling in darkness in this world when it comes to esteem them highly for their work's sake. We struggle in being a blessing to your pastor when the Bible said, honor them in honor and double honor. We struggle with being a blessing the way God said be a blessing. Yes. Not everybody. I'm talking about those that struggle in this world, struggle by world people's opinion, struggle with the influence of the world. Glory be to God. But we need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. It can't kill our soul. It can't touch our soul because in Christ Jesus we're free. It's not a coward to be humble. It's not a coward. It's not weakness to be humble. It shows strength when somebody can lie on you and you can walk away knowing it was a lie. You don't have to defend yourself. We are free. You don't have to defend yourself. We are free. Just like the moon reflect the S-U-N. That's the way the saints is supposed to reflect in this dark world. The S O N. Oh my God, that was a that was a good word right there for you to remember. Not only do the the moon reflect the S U N. Mm -hmm. There's a uniqueness I found out about the sun and the moon. They never go out. The moon never loses light. The sun never loses its light. Mm -hmm. But they shine brighter when it's their time to shine. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. The sun never goes out, but when 
It's time for the moon to shine. The sun seemed like it has gone out. Glory be to God. It's time for the saints to rise up and shine. Let our light shine in a dark hour. Glory be to God. It's time for preachers not to try to outshine one another. When your time come to shine, the pastor will allow you to shine. But you ought to reflect the S-O-N. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, bless the name of the Lord. I'm getting happy right here. Glory be to God. I am getting happy being a representative and a reflection of the S-O-N. Glory be to God. I want to close with this particular scripture and chapter. And we are nearing finishing up tonight. Romans 12 and verse 2. This will help the, help the church. This will help the saints. This will help us in this world. Romans 12 and verse 2. It said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There is a perfect will of God that we can have and manifest in this world. I've heard it said many times because many people, even myself at one time, didn't understand. That's why, as Pastor Folk was saying tonight, that's why it's so important to study. Glory be to God. And hear what the Spirit says to the church. Because if we don't, we'll form our own opinion. We'll form the opinion of others, and it may not be right. So we can be perfect, we can live perfect in a dark, hostile world that we're in. The perfectness here, the only acceptedness of the perfect will of God is when we demonstrate the love of God. Hallelujah. When we demonstrate and have the love of God, we have become perfect at that time because there's nothing else. Somebody say nothing else. nothing else. Nothing else can perfect us but love and the love of God. For God so loved the world, a perfect God so loved an imperfect people that he gave his only begotten. That's love, saints. Yes. That's love, listeners. And let me share with you without trying to be so deep. I haven't always had that kind of love. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. I, I, I got saved. I was born again. Glory, full of the Holy Ghost. But it takes persevering in the Word. Yes. It takes studying the Word to get to a place where you can, every occasion, perfect the will of God dealing with this world and sin nature. When the world persecute you and the flesh in you want to rise up, that's when the perfected will of God is supposed to kick in through the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. We must demonstrate God's love. And that's what makes people say something about them. My God. I see the husband walk off from them, and they still happy. The children ain't saved, done all kind of stuff, and they still living for the Lord. That's love, saints. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. So look at the word conform. I took time and looked at that as I get close to my study. And closing out tonight, from a biblical standpoint, oh, Google can say, I didn't look at Google, didn't even look at Webster. 
I've learned now to look at what the Bible says. Every answer we need is in the Bible, and it was there before Google came in place. It was there before Webster came in place. Sister Morgan sang a song, every voice, every scripture is mine. I sang a little song every now and then, wouldn't dare do it tonight, but the Bible is right. Somebody's wrong. The Bible been around before Webster and Google. So the Bible, what does the Bible, what is, what is the writer encouraging us in this world? It said, be not conformed to this world. I wish somebody would say this world, this world. not the world to come. This one we got to deal with. If we're going to deal with the world to come, to spend eternity with Jesus. It said, be conformed not to this world. And conform, the writer's encouraging us, don't be similarity. Don't be like the church and saints on Sunday morning and be like the world all next week. Great God from the hallelujah. Identify yourself like Christ and not like the world. Don't look like the world. And I know we get in a lot of trouble, so nobody needs to try to trouble me tonight or trouble Sister Morgan, not even yourself. The world said it doesn't make any difference how you dress. Glory be to from the television to the marketplace to the house of prayer. People just don't dress like saints anymore. They ain't got nothing to do with you old folk. Yet. But we are bringing the world even into the house of prayer and saying that ain't nothing wrong with it. All right, I better move on. I better move on. We're not supposed to conform ourselves like the world, dress like the world, talk like the world, act like the world. You can't live them both. You got the forsaken one and cleave to the other one or let go the other one and, and go with the other one. We must make a difference. There is a difference. In the old man of sin, and the new man born again. The old man of sin pursues sin. Oh, my God, hallelujah. I said the old man of sin pursues sin. But the born again man pursues holiness. Oh, my God. The writer goes on to say, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will. It talks about transform. And it's all there in the Bible. It simply means make a change. Hallelujah. We've been pleading and begging and still doing it with Father, Son, and Holy Ghost where God has commissioned me to lead, instruct, rebuke, and reprove. I am not fighting, but I'm encouraging us as believers, if you're going to walk with God and live in this world as a saint, you've got to make a change. You can't keep doing things the old way, the old nature way, and expect to get new results. It's time to make a change, church. It's time to make a change. Glory be. And I'm not talking about unageable people. I'm talking about people like me, Sister Morgan, and many others that have been in holiness. One day is too long not to change. But if we've been in holiness a number of years and still acting the way of the world, still acting the way that old sin nature, still talking about don't get on my nerves and Still talking about, I don't like that, and I ain't going to put up with that. If you walk with Jesus, born again, you're going to put up with that and some more. Because I said earlier, we are free. Mm -hmm. Glory. And when you are free, you will refuse to be bound again. So it means make.
make a change. What kind of change, Bishop? Well, I'm glad you asked. In lifestyle, if our life is still a lifestyle of the world, glory be to God. There's no change. Not only our lifestyle supposed to change, our appearance supposed to change. I know clothes don't make you holy. I know clothes don't make you unholy. But there's got to be a difference. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Our appearance got to be changed. And not only our appearance, our character. And this, this is one that really is, is, is hurting the body of Christ more than clothes and all that stuff. Our character. Your character is the person you are when ain't no, excuse my English, ain't nobody around you. Your character, if ain't nobody around you and you're right, you're living the lifestyle of Christ, you, you, your appearance is right, and you done change, you're the same when you get in the midst of people. Glory be to God. As saints, we got to have character. That's the way not only transform character, but it's the way someone thinks. Our thinking got to be different. The way one feels, our feeling got to be different. The way one behaves, our behavior got to be different. We, we got to know how to talk to one another. We got to know how to respect one. You just can't say anything you want when you want to say it because of the way you feel. You got to have some decency about you. You got to have some behavior about you. Glory. Just because you think something, my God, it is not as detrimental as it is when it come out. If you think negative about someone and that come out, Oh, my God, you surely going to have to repent. Mm. As saints, we don't live like the old man of sin. If you're still living like the old man of sin, under the name of a pastor, preacher, prophet, teacher, apostle, evangelist, saint, deacon, and the list goes on. If you're still living under the banner of the old man of sin, you need to be born again so all old things will pass away and be renewed in your mind. How do we be renewed in our mind? Well, the Bible tells us we strive till we get the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Now, I close seriously. I hope you have kept up with us. I hope the teaching has been good for you, for it certainly was good to me, God, and the angels in heaven. They've been waiting for you to accept what God has for you so he can send it, get it to you. Glory, not stuff and things only. But I believe as I close, I want to remind the church, we need our joy back. Hallelujah. Glory. The same kind of joy that those that was examples before us, glory. If your joy is in the Lord and not in your husband, or wife, or children, or friends that do wrong, you will never go back to the world. If your love for God is stronger than your husband, your wife, your children, and friends of the world, you'll never go back to the world on God. But you can't hurt somebody you're in love with. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. You cannot hurt someone you're in love with. And I encourage us to fall deep in love with God. Hallelujah. It's a lot of God to love, and he will not abuse you. Don't get me wrong or the wrong impression. 
as saints, we will face some hard times. In this world, we're going to face some hard times. We're going to face some tribulation. We're going to face some sickness. And our heartache over living in this world is going to happen. But I believe a tired saint from praying, this is experience now, this is not scripture, but I believe a tired saint that pray, a tired saint from holding on, a tired saint for enduring persecution, a tired saint for fasting, a tired saint from loving, a tired saint that bring God glory, my God, he's more pleased than an untied saint. We got saints that are tired and ain't praying. We got saints tired and don't fast. We got saints tired and don't read their Bible. We got saints tired, just tired, just tired. But I asked us tonight to rejoice in being tired because you pray, you read your Bible, you love, you endure, knowing that it brings God glory. Hallelujah. It's an honor. And it brings God honor and glory when his saints maintain their holiness, their integrity during tribulation, trials in this world. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Keep it real in this world while we wait for the coming of the Lord, while we do the good pleasure of the Lord. Keep it real in this world. God has positioned us as not only the saints, God has positioned the saints as the church in this world ruled by Satan and the devil, and is empty. He has placed the saints in this world as the church. Mm. Great God from that, baby. Yes, as God. the church. Yes. When God reminded me that today, I got happy all myself. Mm. We're not just saints. We are the church. Mm. And that is the only organism that is in this world that God has said the gates of hell oh cannot prevail. It can't last, saints. Whatever the world is putting you through as the church, mm. I got good news for you. Jesus. This too will pass because mm. it can't last. My Lord. Father, we thank you tonight for your grace and mercy. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your peace. Thank yes. you for your joy. Yes. Yes, thank you for able to keep us and present us faultless Mm. in the name of Jesus. Return the heart of the children back to the Father. Oh, God, hallelujah. Return the hearts of the children back to the Father. We honor you as our Father. Turn our hearts back to you. And we'll give you glory and we'll give you praise. Look on all of our school children that are back in school, in college. Mm. Look on the parents and having some having to work two jobs just to find the end to make it meet. But they know who holds the end. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. There's no lack in you, Christ Jesus. And we give you glory and praise. Strengthen our elders all over the land. Strengthen the preachers all over the land. Strengthen the saints all over the land. And we'll give you glory and praise when we come together again. In Jesus' name, thank God and amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. May the Lord be with you. Till the next time. God bless you.